Hey y'all, last night we went to Disney World. It was Night of Joy. Night of Joy is a Christian concert where tens of thousands of people uh, gather to um, just worship the Lord and uh, just have fellowship together, have a good time, ride rides. It was really cool to see because there were, I think, seven or eight bands in all different parts of the park and all different times and different amphitheaters, um, some were in smaller amphitheaters, some were on the Princess Castle stage, and no matter where you went, you ran into a packed crowd. In the smaller amphitheaters, I, I, for example, I wanted to go see Cutlass, and Cutlass was in a smaller amphitheater, and when, by the time we got there, you couldn't even get in. I mean, there were people backed up 20 feet from the door uh, to the amphitheater, and you couldn't even get in. And when you went by the Princess Castle, no matter who was playing, it was just packed. It was swarm, elbow to elbow. People just worshiping the Lord. When you went on rides, you were standing in line, you heard people chanting Jesus' name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And you heard people talking about how much they loved Jesus and, and how they knew Jesus. And, and people were, you know, talking with people they didn't even know and, and, and just, you know, sharing faith and sharing, sharing life. And, um... Just uh, uh, it was just really great to be a part of. It was really awesome, and we it really it really wore us out. We we decided to leave at about midnight, and uh, what, we were we were getting on the tram to to go back to the the parking lot, and uh, we get to a parking lot that looks like ours. And I'm not sure if any of you have been to Disney World or not, but the parking lots kind of look the same. And we thought the uh, tram guy was going to uh, take us to the wrong parking lot, so we, we flagged him down, he stopped, and we, we jumped off, and by the time we jumped off, he took off, and we realized we were in the wrong parking lot. And so we had to flag down another tram. And this time, we, we got to the back of the tram, there's a person, you know, with the intercom in the back of the tram, and it was this nice young lady, and, and we were telling her how we got off on the wrong tram, and uh, at the wrong parking lot, and... She said that she could take us over to our car, and we began to talk. You know, she asked us about the concert, who was playing, what kind of concert it was, where the, the bands were playing, stuff like that. We started to name off a few of the bands, and, you know, she I think she knew one, and, you know, we told her it was a Christian concert, and she said that she had, um, you know, she had uh, worked it before, but never had really attended, and, uh, she told us why, you know, how she come to work at Disney World. She was going to school in, in Florida, and, and it came time for um, for her to drop us off at our car. And uh, we all got off at the off of the tram. And as we're walking away, I noticed my wife wasn't with me. So I turned around to see where she was, and she was back at the tram talking with the lady. And she was there for you know about maybe five, maybe eight minutes, just talking with the lady. And I saw her give her a hug, and she come running back over to us. And I asked my wife, I said, you know, what were you guys talking about? And she, you know, my wife said, she just couldn't get off the tram without asking the young lady if she knew the Lord. See, God, the whole tram ride, God was just laying it on her heart. And she was even talking about how she was trying to find ways out of doing it. She was talking about, you know, she was waiting for the, the lady to say that she was a Christian, so maybe that way she wouldn't have to ask her if she knew the Lord. And... But the lady didn't. And so by the time the tram stopped, my wife had to make a choice. She to chose to step out of her comfort zone. And, and she asked the lady if she knew the Lord. And the lady said she liked to say that she did. And so my wife just shared a, about a personal invitation, um, asking Jesus to come and, and live within you. And, and uh, she, you know, she gave her a hug and told her Jesus loved her. And she made sure to say, you know, not in a cliche kind of way does Jesus love you, but Jesus loves you so much that he prompted me to step out of my comfort zone to talk to you and to tell you that he loved you. And when my wife came running back, she had tears in her eyes, and, and the tram had to do a turnaround, so the tram actually turned around and come driving, you know, come and drove by us again, and, and we saw that the, the girl as she waved to uh, my wife had tears in her eyes. And uh, my wife began to tell me about how she just couldn't get off the tram. I mean, the Lord laid it on her heart so heavy. She couldn't get off that tram without asking this young lady if she had a relationship with the Lord. Now, get this, okay? Christian concert. People standing in line and standing in crowds talking about how much they love Jesus. 
and I wonder if anybody before my wife attempted to talk to that young lady. Myself included. Most of us just exited off the tram. It was just another end of the concert, end of the event for us. And we were happy to be going home because we were tired. But my wife had a ear for the Lord. My wife was willing and obedient to to do what he wanted her to do. And, and you know, it, it just goes to show that you know, we can gather together in Jesus' name and we can sing songs and we can talk about how much we love Jesus. But are they just words? Are they just things that have become common to us? Oh, I got the Christian t-shirt on and, and I like the Christian music and and I love to chant Jesus' name and... What does that make you do? Does it make you step out of the boat? As a matter of fact, the youth group we went to called this the get out of the boat event. My wife got out of the boat. She stepped outside of her comfort zone in order to share the gospel with someone she didn't even know. That she'd only met like three minutes prior. She touched someone's life. Because the Holy Spirit prompted her to get out of the comfort zone. You know... We never know who it is around us that needs to, 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 to hear that love of Jesus, or, or more importantly, to see and to experience that love of Jesus. Because it's one thing to tell somebody that Jesus loves them, it's another thing to show them. Too many, you know, in, in today's Christianity, in today's Americanized Christianity, to tell someone Jesus loves you has become almost commonplace. I mean, something we're supposed to do. But... What about showing the love of Jesus? What about actually stepping outside of, of everything that we feel comfortable in? Because, I mean, I, I feel comfortable in telling somebody I don't know Jesus loves you, but am I comfortable enough to stop for 5, 10, 15 minutes and just share Christ? With a, with a stranger, a perfect stranger, after a long night at a concert when my feet are hurting, when I've got blisters, when my legs are tired, when I'm soaking wet, when it's all about me. I don't always. You know, we can learn a lot from this tram experience. But the most important thing is the most important thing that we need to learn is that when we say we love Jesus, when we say that Jesus is our homeboy and Jesus is our best friend, that Jesus is our Lord, that Jesus is our Savior, is that just commonplace for us? Or do those words move us out of our seats and into the lives of others? I love you guys. I'll talk to you later.